Hello there ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. So today we're going to be taking a look at this Xbox One X motherboard. Now this was initially never going to be a video, however upon inspection of the console it seems like it's going to be a pretty daunting and pretty interesting repair. It came in and the I'll show you a description of it which was written on a sticker on the actual console itself. So obviously I've already taken it apart but I do have the rest of the console next to me. And if we take a look at the sticker, it says hard drive inside, displays nothing, please check hard drive. So I'll check the hard drive and the hard drive is in fact dead. This is the original hard drive and it actually freezes up my computer when I attempt to plug it into the computer. It loads up two of the partitions, the system update partition and system update 2 partition but every other partition freezes up the con freezes up the computer when I try and load it so that hard drive is faulty so I've prepared a new hard drive and basically I got the new hard drive installed put it all back together and this is a hard drive that's supplied by the customer and I prepared this on the computer using the software and it still didn't work so I've taken the console completely apart taken the motherboard out taken the obviously all the rest of the components and see, try to see if I can figure out what was actually going on. And upon closer inspection, there's a lot of damage to the area. Now, I've already cleaned the area of the leftover flux residue from when someone has been sat here tinkering about with it. But there's still an issue. And I'm going to show you what the issue is under the microscope. Okay, so here we are on the HDMI circuit. And if we take a look at the little TDP 158 HDMI retimer I see that definitely had some work done so we don't know the current status of that chip uh, we don't know whether this chip works we don't know whether it's been soldered correctly uh, we don't know pretty much anything about it to be honest we can clearly see that someone's been going sloppy fingers around the little capacitors above the chip and also down below as well there's little bits of flu little bits of solder blobs everywhere so that's going to need cleaning up and making it look okay again uh, this capacitor here this capacitor here looks rather burnt so this doesn't look too clever and I've already cleaned this up a little bit so I, I, I did a little bit of a clean just to see because there was that much flux on this chip it was unreal um, so this capacitor here really does not look good at all and that could well be shorted we'll check that out later but if we follow the HDMI circuit up, there's a nice, another nice little solder blob. And a nice little solder blob just here. So that's going to have to be cleaned up. Uh, this capacitor here has been knocked out of place, so we'll have to clean that up. Uh, that looks like it's making a connection, but that, that we'll still clean it up anyway. Uh, up to the HDMI EMI filters, I haven't tested those yet. And if we take a look at the HDMI port, it looks to be okay. However, when we look on closer inspection, so if we just try and get some better light in here, so if we look on closer inspection, although these look okay and it looks like the pads are there and they look absolutely fine, you know, to the naked eye, you'd think that was absolutely fine, but then if we come in with a pair of tweezers. Oh dear. So this what you're seeing here is the pad actually moving with the pin. Yes, exactly. Not good. Okay, so let's just go across all these pins. So we've got one trace pulled up there. You can see that trace there. So upon further, on further inspection, we can clearly see that actually this port isn't okay. This port is far from okay. And we're going to have to sit here and run, I think there's around about six, 14 to 16 missing traces. And on top of that, we don't know whether or not the chip works. Uh, I don't know the history of the machine. It does turn on. But we obviously get no display and this is the reason why. So, like I said, initial inspection, I thought this port was fine. But evidently it's clearly not. And it's clearly the work of someone 
who has attempted to change their own port or at least I believe they've tried to change their own port what we're going to do first we're going to get this port removed and then we're going to see what kind of damage we're looking at and yeah let's see if we can fix it shall we okay so back over to the overhead cam then we need to get this port off first of all so what we're going to do is we're going to use some hot air and heat up from the bottom because that is the safest way to remove the port I'm not going to be reusing this port because I don't know what the internal internal condition of the port is like so I'll obviously use a brand new port on this uh, I'm going to set my airflow and temperature up to 60% airflow and 480 degrees there we go okay so let's get this port removed and we'll see what kind of damage we're looking at because these traces are definitely lifted off So I'm going to flip the board around so as I can do this from above. And now I'm going to come in with the tweezers. And there we go. So, uh, you can already see that we have all of those traces on that port. All barring five. So there's 14 missing traces, and that is a hell of a job. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do then. So let's go back under the microscope and we'll take a look. And dearie me, that looks a mess. That looks an incredible mess. Right, let's clean up the board a little. Let's try not to pull any more traces off while we do it. Okay, so what are we dealing with then? So this one here, well, we might as well break that away because that's, that's shot anyway. So I believe 17 is a ground. That one's a ground. That one's a ground, and that one's a ground. So we've only got ground pads left. Excellent. Brilliant. Beautiful. Fantastic. So, what we need to do first, we need to get a new port on top. And we need to run jumper wires to these 15 missing traces, barring the, barring the ones that we don't need, such as pin number 14. I believe we don't need that one. Yeah, let's get started. So we, we need to clean up first. Right, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wick away these these holes here, these ground holes. And I'm going to clean these up so as we can get another port in. I don't want to use this solder, obviously, for obvious reasons. Uh, it's lead-free lead solder and uh, we just don't want to use it. So let's add a bit of flux there. And we'll also add some here and try and tin these pads at the same time. Um, even though they are completely irrelevant to this job. 15 missing traces then this might take a while so what I'll do is I'll walk through what I'm doing for the first few and then I'll probably fast forward through a few until we get to the end uh, and obviously show you where they all go at the end as well right, so I'm just going to clean up these pads replace this, this side of the pads with some leaded solder And now I'm going to wick away and clean them up. So you might be wondering why we're adding leaded solder there. And the reason for that is these are ground planes. And lead free solder has a much higher melting temperature. And the fact that the ground planes are going to be sucking up most of the heat. It's, uh, it's always best to add leaded solder or low melt solder just to lower the melting temperature. And just allow us to be able to clean up these, these joints a little bit easier and a lot quicker. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot quicker to solder or to uh, wick away leaded solder than it is to wick away lead free solder and even though the lead free solder is still there it's still going to lower the melting temperature because there's a mixture of the two different solder types in there so we're going to try and wick away now and these boards just really do not like being wicked so what I'll do with these is I'll take my heat gun and I'll use the heat gun to assist me in transferring heat.
Right, so those holes are almost clean, but I'm going to flick the board around. And it looks like I might have knocked a couple of components there, so I'm going to move them. I might have lost a couple as well, so I'll sort them out afterwards. That's not really too much of a big deal right now. The main focus here is to get this working, or to get these traces restored. So let's just move this little transistor back into place. Okay, so let's flip the board around quickly, and we'll finish cleaning out these holes. So let's try and clean it out without the heat gun this time. Eh, uh, nah. Oh, I really hate Xbox One boards. Well, Xbox One X in particular, they're so thick. Alright, so let's be a little bit counterproductive and refill this hole. Right, that does not want to clear out. So, I'm going to get my solder sucker. I'm going to find it and uh, I'll try and suck it out instead. There we go. Right, okay, so looks like we've lost another two of those ground pads somewhere and uh, might have lost a couple of resistors there as well. So what I'm going to have to do is I'll, re I'll replace those resistors later on. That's not too much of an issue. I don't know whether they were there to start with or not. That could have been already gone, but um, never mind. I can I can sort them out. It was me! Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, apart from that, it's just going to be as simple as running a load of jumper wires to pretty much everywhere and try and get this working. So let's clean up first of all. Okay, that should be clean enough, I suppose. Right, so let's pop a port on then. Um, we're going to secure it in by soldering the back legs. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to prop this up with something. Just make sure that stays in place. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's not do it that way. Let's do it from the front. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to pop some flux on. And I'm going to pre-apply some solder to my soldering iron. And I'm going to press down on the port. Right, so that's in place. So we'll flip the board around in a second. What I'm going to do first, I'm just going to check the alignment by popping this into the chassis. Good, so we're in position. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to solder these legs from the back now. So again, same as before, I'm just going to add a bit of flux to the ground legs. Okay, that will do it. That's good enough for me. So let's clean up the back. And I'm just going to check the alignment once more. Okay, so the alignment now, now that I've just been fiddling, isn't quite as, as lined up as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to heat up from the bottom and just let the port drop into place properly. So I'll turn the airflow back up to 80, 80%. I did see that drop into place there. Yeah, okay, so that other plastic piece has gone through. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to check the alignment once more. Just make sure that it's absolutely perfect. Before I carry on. And there we go. So the board isn't screwed in, so it is going to be a little bit loose there, but that's absolutely perfectly lined up. Okay, so what I've done here is I've adjusted the microscope so as basically I can see the HDMI port on a slight angle. Now you can't tell this, but the actual microscope itself is pretty wonky. But because of the way I've positioned the camera and things, um, it's showing up as pretty much straight. Dang it! I'm looking at the wrong, I'm looking at the wrong port. What am I doing? Right. So what I need to do then is I'm going to need to move 
this slightly back into position so this is a ground pad here and I don't want it touching the rest of them so it needs to be pushed to the right slightly and the same with this one so number 17 I think number 17 is actually soldered to the pad. I think the pad's just loose. And obviously that was what was wrong with most of them. But we can't have those kind of loose pads because it's just not going to work. As uh, Well, you haven't seen it, but I have. It's just not going to work with loose pads. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop my multimeter into continuity mode. That's the mode that's going to go beep when we complete the circuit. And I'm just going to pop one probe on ground and one probe on pin number 17. And that is indeed connected. And it's not shorting across on the others. And the same for this one here. So there's only two... There's only two there, but what I am going to do is I'm going to try and solder this pad a little bit further across. So it's, it's actually gone on kind of an angle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and solder it a little bit further across by just using the soldering iron and nudging it with the tweezers. So I'm going to get my angle tip. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to heat this up and try and just move it into position. Uh, that's a little bit better. It's a, tad, it's a tad further across. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just move this slightly out of the way. There we go. So now that's nowhere near these two other pins. Uh, and uh, we shouldn't get any shorts. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pre-tin all of these legs. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to make it as easy as I possibly can to solder these jumper wires without risking tapping the one next to it. I'll just add a bit of flux there to the pins. And I'm going to take some leaded solder. There we go. So I'm going to look at this on an angle now, see if I can see any more bridges. And um, we look good. That looks fine. Excellent. Right, so now it's time to start running jumper wires. So what we need to do is we need to figure out where they all go. And we need to prepare the pads so as we can actually run the jumper wires. And then pretty much just run them. So let's clean up. Awesome. So that's nice and clean. Uh, by the look of it we have no bridges. Excellent. Okay, so let's just start running jumpers then. So we're going to start from the right hand side because I'm left handed. So we'll start from the right hand side. And what I usually do when I'm running jumper wires is I add a bit, little bit of flux in just you know a random place where I can easily access it, access it. And the reason for that is because I want to be able to easily tin the jumper wire as I'm going along without having to keep stopping and basically tinning it off the board. I can just tin it where it is and basically just run what I need. Just about ready now to run some jumpers. So what I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to go ahead and just scrape back at some of these, um, some of these traces. So you can see here that I've already started scraping away at that. Um, I've just realised that the video wasn't recording and uh, yeah, I'd actually already soldered the jumper wire to it, so to the pin itself, and uh, I've just undone it just so as you could. Pretty much see what I'm doing and uh, see how it's all all being done. So what I'm gonna, what I'm likely to do is basically just do a few of these and walk you through what I'm doing, and then because it'll take too long to explain after every single one and it'll get a little bit repetitive, I'll probably end up just fast forwarding through a lot of it. Uh, I mean, you don't once I've done you know two or three, you're going to get the general idea of how we're doing it. So basically what I'm doing there is just exposing all of the traces that I'm going to need. Uh, 
That should be more than enough exposed. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to tin all of those exposed traces so as I can join some wires to it. Okay, so let's clean up and then we can start tinning some jumper wire and get some jumper wires ran. Okay, clean enough. Good. Alright, so now I'm going to take some jumper wire. This is just enameled wire. Um, what I need to do with this is just tin it so as we expose the conductive core in the middle. And then we can use it as jumper wire. So I'm going to add a bit more flux just in the general area. Nothing specific. I'm going to pre-apply some more solder onto my iron. Uh, I'm just going to tin a little run of this jumper wire. Just by scraping along with the iron. That should probably be enough to run all of these, to be honest. Right, come on, get off there. And I got a nice blob there again. Beautiful. Told you I'm not really uh not really with it today to be honest. I've got a neck ache and a back ache and a headache. And uh, I just really didn't want to do any work today. But I've got no choice. There we go. Awesome. So that should be soldered now. Let's just give it a little nudge. Just make sure it's in place. And it is. Awesome. Right, so let's go for the next one now. The next one should be pretty easy. Just because it's got quite a big pad. So the next one should be good. The next one should be easy to do. But we'll see. Usually when that's when that should be easy, they're pretty tricky, so we will see. This is the first time I'm doing it this way. I usually run the jumper wire right to the end point, but uh this time I'm gonna be doing it this way, so And actually I'm gonna go from this side because otherwise as I'm going across, being left handed it's not gonna be easy to do. So let's go from pin number 19 and we'll uh, we'll work our way to the left. Uh, probably should have done that from the start, I usually do. But today I'm just being awkward. Well, for some reason my iron just does not want to solder today, so I'm just going to deoxidize my there we go, nice and shiny now. Let's add a bit of flux as well. Just a tad. I think this tip's uh, a little bit poor quality to be honest. I am waiting for some new ones to come. Oh dear, it's just not going well. Right, okay, so let's uh, let's try and give this another go, shall we? Now that I've tinned everything again. Because this just doesn't want to solder today. So I've just re-tinned everything. And hopefully, things are going to start to stick. Hopefully. Oh, I think I finally got one to solder. I think. 
Let's just clean it up and we'll check. All this burnt flux isn't good. Alright, well that looks good. A bit of excess solder there. Oh damn it, come on, stop it. Right, that looks good. That looks good. But the question is, is it good? So, let's just clean it up and we'll check. Uh, the ground pads, what I'm likely going to do is just solder them direct to the HDMI port itself. So if I run a jumper wire from each ground leg to the back of this port here, it should work fine. Okay, so let's do the ground leg now, pin number two. Right, so that's roughly in place. So let's get the tweezers. And this is basically all I'm going to be doing, is just soldering it roughly in place and then holding it with the tweezers so as I can solder it in, pro in place properly just like that and what I'm going to do with these ground wires is I'm just going to lift it up and just solder it to there so basically the reason for that is because I don't want to get it I don't want the ground wires to be running in the way of the jumper wires for the rest of the traces so if I do it this way then they'll be out the way they'll still be connected to ground but they'll be out the way so that's the way I'm going to try and do it let's just add a bit of solder to the tip and let's add some flux up here Um, I'm not sure if that came off the pin. I'll check that in a second. Let's just break that away. I know it's connected to ground on the port itself. But did it stay on the pin? Yes, it did. Awesome. Right, so let's just try and shape that out of the way. And then let's just give it a clean, and then I can check the pin, make sure it's stayed in position. It should have done, it should be okay. And yep, that's good. So let's just nudge this one out the way a little bit more. There we go. Excellent. So that should be good there. Right, let's do pin number three. So what I'll do now is, because I've just showed you roughly how I'm doing it, I'm just going to fast forward through the rest of it. And if there's anything important, I'll obviously stop and talk about it. But uh, essentially all I'm going to be doing is just running the jumpers exactly how I've just run number one, two and 19 to the trace itself. And that's going to minimise the amount of wires that are running around on the board and basically allow us to restore these connections as best that we can.
Right, okay, that looks done. I'm going to go over everything and check them all, just to make sure. So, let's first of all, flood the area with some IPA. I'm going to give it a good clean all the way around. Okay, so that gunk you can see there is basically bits of thermal paste. So, it's basically that stuff there. Because because I've used isopropyl alcohol and that stuff to the board, it's just washed a bit away. I'll clean that up and sort it out. Right, okay, so... Let's take a look then. So let's get some tweezers. And just check these out. Okay, that looks good. So let's do the continuity check then now. Right, so we'll start from the right. Good. 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 Let's check this filter for shorts to ground. No shorts. Good. So they all appear to be connected, and that appears to be completely restored. So um, we need to tackle the fact that we've got a couple of missing components here now. Um, and to be honest, I'm not sure on the status of this TDP-158. Looks like it's been poked and prodded a few times. So if it doesn't work, then chances are it's going to be that what's at fault. And also, I'm not sure if it's going to work without these missing resistors. Uh, so where are they? They are there. So R11 and R12, I'm not 100% sure on whether it's going to work or not without them. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what these components are because we don't have schematics for this board. So, I do have another board down by me that belongs to the same customer, and that one is a no-fix, and he's told me to take parts off it if needed, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So that's those components in place then. Right, so let's see if anything else looks like it's missing. Let's just clean up some of these areas here as well while we're at it. So let's pop that off to one side for a minute. I'm going to reuse the same chip and hopefully it works. But I'm just going to make sure it's soldered properly before I try and turn it on. Because that didn't look good at all. So, to be honest, with the fact that this board's already been destroyed, I don't really trust it anyway. Okay, so let's get this chip resoldered. Take a look at the bottom first, make sure it's in good condition. Make sure we've got no missing pads. And uh, no, it's not. So I'm going to need to restore those pads. Uh, we can see just up the top here, we can see all these oxidized pads and stuff. Uh, so, what you're meant to do before you actually use these chips is you're meant to tin the pads. And it looks like someone hasn't done that. So this is definitely a new chip, because we wouldn't get these pads oxidised the way they are otherwise. So it's definitely a new chip, but it hasn't been prepared properly. That's for definite. Okay. So I'm going to use some Gutwick. And just clean off this centre pad. We don't want that much solder on the centre pad. So I'll just clean off a bit of this centre pad. There we go. Right, 
Right, so let's clean up using some IPA. So just flood the area in flux there, just in isopropyl alcohol, just to get rid of the excess flux. Uh, this board was covered in flux when I when I actually got it, so you know I want to clean up as best I can. Give this every chance of survival. There we go. So I'll dry that off using the hot air station. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my knife tip now. Right, so I don't have a lot of faith in this chip, but we at least need to make sure it's soldered correctly. So that's why I took that chip off and put it back on. And now I can check it on an angle and just see the situation. Make sure that it's all soldered correctly, and then if it doesn't work, then I'll, just, I'll end up changing it. But I will make sure it's soldered properly first. So let's just clean up. Right, okay, so let's take a look on an angle. Let's just dry part of the chip off again first. Okay, it's slightly out. So it needs nudging slightly to the right. And if we use the heat gun, it should put it in, to be honest. Let's add some flux. Okay. So I'll sort of surface tension pull that back in for me. Surface tension is your best friend when you're soldering QFNs. Or anything, really. Okay, let's clean up again and let's take a look and see what's happening. Because I can't see a thing with that burnt flux there. So like I said, I don't actually have much faith in this chip. Right, that looks perfect now. Let's see if I can get you in focus here. There we go. So that looks to be perfectly aligned. Let's take a look at this side. Yep, no bridges. And this side. And um, this might be a bit difficult to focus. Uh, right, I'm gonna hang the I'm gonna hang the uh, scope over the end of the table. Right, so there's the chip. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful solder joints. And turn it around. Perfect. Turn it around again. Perfect. And one final time. For this side. Perfect. So that is perfectly soldered. So now we're pretty much just ready for testing.
So I'm not sure what thermal paste has been used there, but it doesn't look very good. So I'm going to clean that, and then we'll I'll set up the other camera, and we'll get ready for reassembly and test. Right, so that's nice and clean. So I'm going to get the other camera set up. And you'll have to excuse my hands because they are a bit mucky now. But I'll get the other camera set up and we'll uh, we'll see what happens, shall we? Right, okay then, ladies and gents. So here we are with the overhead camera set up. And let's just get some thermal paste on here. Let's put a big S for success. There we go. More than enough. Perfect. So this is a brand spanking new HDMI lead. Let's plug that in there. Let's turn it on. Okay, so it turns on. Hopefully it picks up a display. We've got a black screen. Yes! Yes, we've got it working. Oh, that's fantastic. That's brilliant. Right, okay. I did not expect that to work then, guys. I swear I did not expect that to work. Okay, um, so let's get... I need... the handily named green. So let's plug that in there. Oh, that's fantastic. That's brilliant. So I'm actually going to get paid for one. <laughs> right, so I'm going to get a controller. I'm going to run through the setup, make sure it all works. The one thing I'm not going to test is Wi-Fi because I can never remember which way the thing goes inside the board. Um, and I don't want to end up blowing the card. So the one thing I'm not going to test is Wi-Fi. So we've got USB. Offline system update. I'm going to go ahead and let this run through, and uh, I'm going to go take I'm going to go take myself a coffee, and uh, I'll be back in a minute. Awesome. Right then, ladies and gents. So this is installed, and it appears to be working. Uh, let's uh, let's go into the settings. Let's see if he's reading everything else. Uh, let's enable 4K. Excellent, brilliant. So it's working in 4K, which is good news. That means that this console is working, and pretty much all that's left to do now is just to yeah, just just to reassemble. Uh, so it's working 4K, working in 1080p. Let's test the disk drive. So let's get ourselves a test disk. And let's pop that in. Should be Zoo Tycoon. The disk is quite dirty, so it might take a while to read. This is my test disk after all. Hmm. I'm wondering, is this disk drive working? Um, well, I'm going to clean the disk, I think. Uh, oh, shoot, I can't. I can't eject the disk. Damn it. Well, I'm going to have to take the disk drive eject button. And... Uh, plug that in so I'll do that now right so let's eject that that might not be reading but uh, that said it is pretty damaged this disc is now um, I'll clean it with some isopropyl alcohol right so that's nice and clean now it seems to be spinning okay
Hmm, that's a bit... That's going to be a bit annoying if the disk drive doesn't work. Because that's going to be more work to swap a disk drive over. Right. Uh, I mean, the disk itself now is in fairly good condition. Now, the disk drive itself is being recognised because it wouldn't have installed the software. So the disk drive itself is being recognised. So I'm wondering if it's maybe got a laser issue. It's a little bit strange how it's not reading discs. It does appear to spin up fine and then it stops spinning. So whether it just can't recognise that it's an Xbox disc, I don't know. And, uh, hmm, actually my disc might be damaged. I might have just seen a dent in it. So I'm going to get another disc. Right, so I've got FIFA 19. I'm going to pop that in, see if that works. And it's not reading FIFA 19 either. Oh, hang on. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It's just it's just picked up. So I'm going to have to sit here and wait and see if this actually installs now. For some reason, though, it's not picking up an image, which is a bit strange. Um, hmm. That is strange, actually. Hmm. It's not reading the disc title. I don't know what's going on there. Right, okay. So I'm going to need to connect to Wi-Fi and see if it does it then. Um, it is installing, which is very weird indeed. Um, I've just plugged in the Wi-Fi drive, the Wi-Fi card. Let's see if it picks up or whether I need to reboot it. So it picked up, so I'm going to log in and uh, then we'll see if it reads it. Checking connection. Can't connect. Check again. Uh, I'll connect my hotspot. Set up wireless network. Let's see if it picks up my hotspot. Okay. Hardware problem. 176. Right. Okay. Um, let's reboot. Right. So, let's see if it picks up Wi-Fi now. Right, let's see if it comes up hardware problem this time. No. That's not working. Right, so... This is looking like it's got several issues, to be honest. The Wi-Fi is not working. The disk drive isn't working properly. Uh, I mean, how many more problems can one console have? Right, okay, so I've just spoken to the customer and he's told me to try the disk drive from his other console, so I'm going to try that and see if we can get that working and then we'll deal with Wi-Fi later on. Let's see if this accepts a disk. It does. Right, internet's working now. And now it's reading as FIFA 19. That's strange. Right, so the disk drive could be good then. It could have been just a fact, just a slight glitch. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to let that install. And uh, I'll be back once it's done. Well, it's okay. So that seems to be installed now. So let's just see if we can actually load it. And it doesn't appear to be loading. This has definitely got issues with the disk drive. Um, I mean, there's not really a lot more I can do with this. It's loading. Okay, it's, apparently it's not installed. So what was going on with that? Well, I think this is still having to all installing. Yeah, queued. Right, okay, so apparently it needs an update. Great. Uh, right, I'm going to put the other disk drive back in. I, thi I, th I think it's working, to be honest. I don't know. I honestly don't know if this is working, but I think I'm going to put the other disk drive back together and see if it reads it on that one now. So, C Games. Manage the queue. 
Um, it appears to be installing. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to visit this later, I think, because I've got to pop out and go and see my partner's dad. It's my stepson's birthday, so I think I'll leave this running. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just see if I can disable... Just see if I can disable the uh, auto-turn-off feature, the power-saving mode. Uh, so power mode and start up. Turn off after, do not turn off. So I'm going to let this install and um, I'll stop the recording and I'll, I'll revisit it later, I think. Right, hello again ladies and gents. So it's been a while now. It has actually been about five hours. So I've been running birthday errands with my partner and stepson. And uh, this looks like it's installed. So let's see if we can get it loaded up. See if it works for this one, and then I'll finish off by putting the original disk drive back in and seeing if that works. Seeing if it was just some sort of a glitch or not, I'm not really sure. Um, it looks like it's not actually going to load. Has it actually installed? Probably not. Uh, it says it has. Yeah, that's not that's not installed, has it? Um, Right, let me reconnect to the hotspot uh, because that's what I was using earlier. Just let me reconnect to that quickly. Um, and I just realised I went out, which means it was connected to no internet. Lovely. So it's probably installed from the disk, but it hasn't installed. It wouldn't have installed the update. Hmm. So I'll probably have to re-download that two gig. Probably best to. Oh, actually no. The workshop. The workshop speed is probably about the same as on my Wi-Fi. On the hotspot. Uh. Oh, lovely. It hasn't installed. Oh, brilliant. Let me see if I can connect to. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm just going to install the other, the other drive back in here. That's what I'm going to do. No, it's okay. So this is shut down now. Let's unplug this and this and this. I'm not going to be re I'm not going to be reassembling this in the video either. Um, simple reason. This video is way too long as it is. And uh, I need to get this video wrapped up because otherwise I'm going to be there forever editing. So, um, because the motherboard was already out of the chassis when I started the video, I can just leave it. It's not a big deal. Right, so let's pop that back over there. Like I said, not going to reinstall. All I'm going to do is just get this turned back on. Sorry, I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to re reassemble in this video. I'll reassemble it tomorrow now anyway. Uh, it's uh, 9:30 at night, so I was working yesterday for 24 hours straight, and that is no lie. Literally 24 hours straight to get a batch of consoles done and back out in time for delivery before the end of the week um, they had to go to London and uh, yeah I was just working flat out so realistically I want to get finished tonight and I do actually want to do my 4000 sub special video tonight so fingers crossed I can get that completed right so this is turning back on now okay so I've got black screen this is another one of them weird consoles that doesn't display a green screen. I don't know why. Is it going to read the disc? Uh, nope. That's not reading a disc. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, okay. It takes a while. But it is reading. 
Let's see if it goes past 2.3 percent. If it goes past 2.3 percent, realistically, it should be working. It's just a little bit slow. And uh, now it's saying 14.7. That's a bit weird. All right, let's have a look at the queue. See what's going on with it. <coughs> Okay. Yeah, that's installing. It should be fine. Should be okay. Um, right, okay. So, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's going to call it there. So, this obviously is working as, <laughs> as best as I'm going to get it working today. Um, and this is the original disk drive, original Wi-Fi card and whatever. So, it seems to be installing from the network. I will, like I said, I will update the video once it's actually installed the game, um, what I'll do, I'll reassemble it all tomorrow, and I'll try a disc in the console in the house when I've got because I've got. Let's get it clear. I've got a thousand megabit internet in the house. I can download super fast. You know, I can I can download really really quick in the house. But with the distance from the house to the workshop and the length of the ethernet cable that goes from the main main network switch to the router in the workshop i you know i'll, I'll lose so much speed i'll get around about 60 megabits a second on a cat 6 cable uh it's that far so yeah i mean um re realistically it's better off download i'm better off downloading in the house so I'll put this back together off camera. Um, like I said, this started on video while it was out of the chassis anyway. Um, and then I'll obviously try and download and install the game and try and play the game. Uh, obviously, if the disk drive is working properly, it'll, it'll let me play the game from disk. Um, but yeah, I'm going to call it there for this one because it's gone on a little bit too long. So to summarise then, this console was originally messed with, with by someone who doesn't know what they're doing and they absolutely destroyed it so they tore most of the pads i can't even remember how many pads i've actually repaired on this uh, but by restoring the missing pads i think it was about 15 or 16 we've managed to restore the hdmi connection we've also replaced the two missing components the two little resistors that was on the top of the circuit just above the hdmi encoder and I also resoldered the HDMI encoder itself because that might have caused an issue with how badly that was soldered. Um, the disk drive does appear to be working, although it is a little bit slow. But everything else does seem to be working as it should. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll do my very best to get back to you. And if you want to see more trying to fix videos where I try and fix mainly consoles but sometimes other things too, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time I upload. I am coming pretty close to 4,000 subscribers so I'm going to have a special video for that where I attempt to repair a board which was intended as a donor board and I'm also planning on doing a full APU swap very soon so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. And... Other than that, thanks very much for watching. It's been a pleasure, and until next time, see you later. Bye for now.